Hello and welcome back to Ride Rescue. In this episode of the Camaro build, I am going to work on the convertible top pieces. Uh, all of these parts need to be cleaned up. Uh, they've got a lot of residue from spray adhesive. Uh, the paint is worn and chipped. And I need to inspect all the joints and make sure nothing's loose. And then the bows that run across, those need to be cleaned up as well. Uh, you can see it's pretty dirty. There's some uh, glue residue in areas. There's some sealant in areas. Uh, there's some spots where the paint peeled off when I was removing the top. So I'm going to use my, my favorite <laughs> cleaner, Simple Green. Um, I typically use this full strength when I'm working on engines or real greasy parts. Uh, in these areas, uh, it's not real grease heavy buildup, so I'm going to go 50 50, half water, half simple green concentrate. And then I'll spray all this down, let it soak in really good, and that'll get all of the. <laughs> The grease buildup off and then I will wire brush or wire wheel all of the adhesive off and then I can go back and, and sand smooth any of these areas and then give the whole thing a coat of black paint. <clears throat> you can see all along this edge um, the fabric for the top folds over and staples all along this piece and then there's another layer for the seal. It's a, like a bead that goes across the front of this that you spray glue all along this edge and then the rubber seal goes on top of that. So you can see that, that buildup of adhesive. So I'm going to wire wheel that off, clean it all up and then paint this. It's looking really good. Got it all wire brushed. I'll just clean it up. I've got some uh, 320 sandpaper here. I used all of Summit's paint products on my Buick build and for a paint job, all the primers and um, sealers, uh, epoxies that I used, uh, the products were really good. The actual finish, I was a little disappointed in the overall finish, but I used the lower single stage paint, uh, similar to what's on the Camaro. For washing up and uh, primers, very happy with the Summit products. In this area of the convertible top's front bow, there's some, some surface rust that is all over in this area. And these actually ended up being really good tack strips, so I didn't want to tear those out and have to rust proof all over inside of there and clean it all out. I really like using a spray-on rust neutralizer. It turns the rust to like a black primer. Works really good. I've had real good luck with it. And you can get it pretty wet, and it's it really soaks into the rust. I'll tack rag it all off, any dust off of it. I'll typically get out my little detail gun, and I'll buy some uh, semi-gloss paint for doing items like this. But one of my last projects was a Pontiac project. I tried out this Rust-Oleum paint on the fender wells and a lot of the little items in the engine bay, and I was really, really pleased with this paint. It's the high performance. It's every bit as good as the quality of the, the automotive paint that I was buying, putting in my little detail gun, and, and I don't have to clean up with this. I just spray it on and put it away.
So when it comes to all these little pinch points, when the top is down, you can see into these areas. And I want to make sure that they've got a good coat of paint so they, they look good. If I was to fold this all the way out and paint it, and then you collapse it, you'd be able to see it's not painted or painted properly. So I'll start out with it collapsed. Uh, I'll just paint the joint areas and then I'll spread it out the way you would see it about halfway so that when the top is up um, you have to move all the material out of these pinch points so you're going to be able to see that those are all nice black paint and then I'll go all the way out and then I can paint all the surfaces so that when you're in the car and you look everything has a nice coat. So there's no hidden areas um, either all the way collapsed or all the way out. But before I start doing that, I need to wipe all this down. Now that I have all the pieces restored, everything's in excellent working condition, everything's painted. I finally got my new cylinders in, my lift cylinders. So I'm going to start putting all this back together. One thing you can notice on these new replacement parts, they do have the plastic bushings on each end. Uh, some of them don't. And so you have to make sure to keep your original ones. And they also have a little O-ring inside of each one of these ends to seal it off. These came with an extra set of O-rings, so if you end up damaging one or losing one, uh, you do have extras, so that's nice. One of the reasons why I had to take all of this apart was to get this alignment perfectly so that I could tighten up these bolts where this cylinder goes on, because when it was adjusted, that bolt was tied against this framework, so I wasn't able to take it off. I had to take everything off, or at least break it loose and move it so that I could get that nut out. It's going to make this much more difficult to adjust, but such is life. Sometimes we do things the hard way so that we can do them right. Uh, these brackets, they are marked. Uh, this is the right hand side. They do have to go up from underneath. I tried to take them down through the top and couldn't get things to line up before I get these in there too far. I'm going to put this top hose on. These fittings are aluminum, so you really want to be careful not to get them cross threaded or tighten them down too much and strip them. Uh, now we'll void the warranty. They make clear of that on their little tag and make sure the o-ring is in there so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to tighten these up and try to get them exactly where they were before luckily there's enough of a dirt residue and scuffing on the finish to know exactly where those came out of and then hopefully that will give me a, a really good starting point on where this all goes back together so that I don't have so much trial and error on adjustment. So my plan is, is to get both sides in with the cylinders and then I'm going to prime that pump and I'm going to run them through full cycles and bleed all the air out to make sure everything is functioning properly before I start putting everything together and then I end up having to take these back out. In order to get better access to refilling this, I'm going to pull this out. These are just little spring clips. Looks like this is leaking a little bit as well. When it comes to filling these up, there's uh, hydraulic fluid you can use, or according to the manufacturer of this pump, you can just use regular old Dexon transmission fluid. I happen to have that, and I don't have the hydraulic fluid. I've used Dexron in these for years, and I've never had any issues. To make it easier for me to load this, I put some 
transmission fluid in a bottle with a squeeze nipple on it. Definitely want to put the cork back in because I've had these just blow fluid all over the garage. Well, I have a little bit of an issue now. I don't have a switch to run this pump. So I'm going to have to rig up a little hot wire <laughs> to run this pump up and down. Okay, we'll cycle this a little bit and I don't know exactly which way is up and which way is down. Okay, one went up, so I've definitely got the up position. Now I'm blowing air, so I put in a little more fluid. Okay, pushing the air again. Took a few cycles to get all the air out of the line. Okay, this, this is where your uh, pre-planning really comes in handy. You don't have to second guess where all the pieces go as you try to put it all back together. So now this piece, if I lay on the glass, I should be able to get everything lined up. I want to start with this one and tighten it up because it has a tendency to come loose. And once this one comes loose, I'll lose that adjustment, and I really don't want to lose that. I'm going to delicately tighten this one up so I don't lose this adjustment. And okay, now I'll start with trying to line up this one. Now I can line up this back piece. Now I can tighten everything up. Everything's tight. I don't have any slack or slop. Uh, these bolts are shouldered so that there shouldn't be any fear of anything being over tightened. I'll put that other side on and then we'll run it through a cycle and make sure everything works before I start putting everything else back together. I'm going to start with this front bow. This front bow has a slip bolt that slides and another one that pivots and it also holds down the latch. So we want to make sure we have the correct latch mechanism on the correct side. They are not marked. And I did a really good job sanding and painting so I can't see my marks where this was before. I'm going to guess. I'll leave it a little bit loose. The center bow has some rubber spacers as well as four screws. Now that locks in. This piece, you have to really be careful that it has holes. It has two holes, one that mounts on the frame and one that mounts to the cable that pulls across. So you want to make sure to get it on correctly so that that cable it, is screwing onto the correct side. You could mount it on this outside and turn this around. So you want to make sure it's on the right way. Now you'll be able to see that the cable actually screws on right there. And then you've got two screws that mount that in. And then the cable pull to hold down the edge of the top. So 
Well, that cable will have to be fed in to the edges of the top material before everything is attached down. Okay, the only bow that's left is this back bow, and it pivots on this area. This last bow will just balance it there. Get some rags on it so I don't chip up the paint. It's got another plastic spacer and a spring washer. And then a regular washer and a nut. Now, if it's incorrectly, this bow should be able to move all the way up to here and fall all the way back down so that it has this full range of motion when the top goes all the way down and the window folds in and everything folds out that this curve is correct if you had it the other way around it wouldn't be able to go all the way down and there are two rubber stoppers that stop this piece both of those were destroyed they just completely fell apart. So I did buy new ones and I'll put those on right now. These are the old petrified pieces, broken versus the new <laughs> soft rubber. Uh, definitely pays to, to check into all these little areas, these little pinch points and make sure they are working properly and have good stops the way they're intended to be. It's kind of hard to make that out, but you can see the glass line as it comes up to the roof line. This glass on the door is about where it should be. This quarter glass is a little too low and there's too much gap back here at the back. So I need to adjust this corner so that when I latch that down, it'll pull everything forward. So you can see on this side, I grabbed one of the, the new rubber seals and there's noticeably way too much gap. And that's just a matter of pulling this forward and down and closing up a lot of these gaps. And then once I have all of those adjustments, then I know I have the frame and this front bow positioned correctly. Uh, and then I can start putting on the, the top pads and the back window and then we'll move on to the roof itself. So just some of those steps you got to make sure to go through before you get too far ahead of yourself and then you're having to pull a bunch of staples out and reposition the top. So what I did is I loosened up this bolt and you can see a little bit of the markings that it made when I tightened it down the first time. Uh, so I, I moved it forward a quarter inch or so, and by moving that forward, it moves the top bow back, which then pulls these back bows forward, and now I have a good seal on that rubber. And that's the distance that I want. We'll do the same thing to the other side. And then I'm ready to start moving forward on all the fabrics. So I've pulled it forward on this side as well. And you can see on this adjustment, I had to move it forward quite a ways, probably half an inch or more. Now I've got a good gap, but you'll also notice right here in the center of this mechanism, it's sagging. This is a common problem that I've seen on these tops and you get all your gaps right and then you can literally hit the glass right there. So now you can see I loosened up this screw and by loosening that up it allows that to actually raise but in order to raise that uh, because it won't just naturally go up unless it's got something to pull it up so that's where this adjustment arm comes in. And 
that's the one that I always try really hard not to move because adjusting this pivot point and adjusting that top of that window is always really difficult to do. A lot of trial and error. But this will just sag right back down again even though I have this adjusted. This is actually the stop so that those bars lift it up but don't lift it up too high. So this is just going to sag. You can see I just kind of pulled down on it a little bit. Uh, it sags pretty easily so it needs that bar to pull tension and lift that up. So I am going to have to adjust this arm. So in order to lift this point up to where that that stop is, I'm going to adjust that stop so that it won't go up too high, but it keeps wanting to drop back down. So by taking this pivot point off, so this sleeve slides off on this bolt. Once it comes out a ways, then you can see the ribs on that on this piece here just need to move this down a few ribs and then tighten it all back up you can see now i've got some gaps there i should be able to loosen this up run that down maybe an eighth of an inch and now put it all back together and tighten it up and we'll try it again okay i'm really happy with this gap now and you can see it is really holding that firm against that stop. So there's there's no sag and there you can't even pull it down. Uh, feels like a good consistent gap. Uh, I can adjust this down a little bit, but once you get the seals in here, uh, it, it acts different. So I may have to adjust this position a little bit. And this gap, Seems a little wide, uh, so I may have to take and move this whole area forward. That side is further forward against that glass, but it could just be a matter of adjusting this quarter glass too. So that's something I'm going to have to play around with a little bit before I get too far ahead of myself. But I would say if I adjust this quarter glass up, just a little bit to match up with the door and I'll bring this door glass up just a little. That will take this whole glass and push it up and back. So that'll close up some of this gap. I've got a couple of stops that go on the front here, but I want to make sure they don't interfere with any of the top and the material and the seal and everything. So this is a good place to stop. Feels good to have all the framework back together. Everything's restored, everything's working properly. It's got a nice satin finish paint job on it. Thanks for tuning in, appreciate you watching. If you would, give me a like, uh, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Really appreciate it, it helps me build my channel. Thanks again for watching, goodbye for now.